So the main issue with polar is that even though um, a Cartesian representation is unique, if you're going to give an x and a y coordinate for a point in the plane, there's only one choice for x and only one choice for y. In the case of polar, if you're going to give a direction to face and a distance to walk, an r and a theta, then um, there can be multiple representations for two reasons. r can be plus or minus, right? So the plus just means walking forward from the pole, the origin, and the minus just means walking backward. So you could either face the direction you, you face the point that you're trying to walk to and walk forward, or you could face um, the opposite direction, right, and walk backward and arrive at the same place. That's one way that creates these multiple representations, is two choices for r, plus or minus. The other is that um, theta plus 2 pi times i faces the same direction. as plane theta. So if you have some angle theta, you can always represent it. You'll always be, you can always give an, a, another angle, a different angle, by adding 2 pi, or a multiple of 2 pi. It could be even be a negative integer multiple of 2 pi. So adding or subtracting complete turns to theta, it gives you a different angle, but has you facing the same direction. And so you can have infinitely many choices for the theta that you use. So for example, suppose we want to figure out all the equivalent representations of this point. Well first, um, you can face pi force, right? Um, plus, you could turn a full turn and still be facing the same direction. So you could turn that full turn backwards or forwards. So as long as i is an integer, a nice round number that is um, either positive or negative, then you're going to have another representation. So this represents infinitely many more representations of this same point in polar. They all have different angles, right, depending on the choice of i. Um, and But they all get you to the same place because they're all facing the, essentially the same direction, pi force. And the other issue we talked about was that you could, instead of facing pi force, you could add pi to that. So pi force plus pi would be 5 pi force. So you could, you could turn another um, half turn, right, or 180 degrees, or pi radians. So you could take this pi force, and you could face the opposite direction and walk backwards and arrive at the same place. And you could be facing that opposite direction, and um, the angle that you give to face in that opposite direction you would face the same way whether you took that angle and added or subtracted a multiple of 2, two pi. So, so with um, j any integer here, I don't know why I put integers, let's cross that out, okay. So now we have um, all of the possible representations of this point, right? You can walk forward 3 to get to this, um, this location. Um, and you can face an angle of pi force or any angle that has you facing in the same direction as pi force. Or you can face the angle opposite of pi force or any angle that has you facing the same direction as the opposite of pi force and walk backwards to get to that location. So we found all a representation of all of those infinitely many um, possible representations. Okay, so this is kind of fun. If we have an inequality, we'll see this is going to be important later on. Can we figure out what this, what, what this represents? So we have this, um, we have this equation that theta has to equal 2 pi thirds. So no matter what, you're facing or you're sort of looking in the direction, oh, 2 pi thirds is over here. You're looking in the direction of 2 pi thirds. Um, but the radius has to be negative 2 or less. So even though you're looking out in the second quadrant, you have to take at least two steps backwards. And you can take more than two steps backwards. And so in this case, you'll see a whole ray of points, right, heading infinitely backwards in that direction. Okay. So here's another inequality. We've got inequalities on both theta and r. So this is saying the angle that you face has to be between pi force and negative pi force. And the radius can go as, you can go as much as one step forward, or you could go as much as one step backwards, or anything in between. So if we look at 
where we're looking. We're looking between um, positive pi force and negative pi force. This is where we're looking, right? Um, and we can step forward up to one unit. So if we step forward from there, we could get to any location that is one step or less forward in that direction. So I'm going to shade this whole um, sector here. We could also step backwards from this location up to a full step, so a distance of one. So even though we're looking out into the first or the fourth quadrant because our angle is between minus pi force and pi force, because the radius can be negative, we can actually walk backward into the second or third quadrant. We could end up anywhere here in between. So we have this region looks a little like maybe a bow tie here. And the reason, just to keep in mind, it's, it's okay to have a negative radius. It just means that you get to walk backward from that location.